Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about term-by-term -term integration of Fourier series. So recall from before we talked about term-by-term -term, um, differentiation of Fourier series. And we have the result that um, if you have f, when we'll take always when we think of f, we're always going to think of the periodic extension of f of x has a Fourier series. And if f tilde um, is also piecewise smooth, and it has its own Fourier series, so we can go, we call that c0 plus the sum over cn cosine, and I'll just be a little short with the notation cn, we'll call that dn sine dot dot because you know what I'm talking about okay so this they both have derivatives and the derivatives exist most places and in, in both f and uh, I'll put a little parentheses there that this is piecewise smooth and that's piecewise smooth as well but if also uh, f tilde is continuous so that this is a, a stronger condition, a stronger condition than just piecewise smooth. Then uh, f tilde can be differentiated uh, term by term. Okay, and that means that uh, that we can read off what the coefficients are. Uh, for we don't have to, we don't we can read off what the coefficients are for f prime by merely taking the derivatives of f and looking at those the resulting terms. All right, so um, this re this this required a fairly a fairly a stringent condition on f that f had to be continuous. And when I mean f, I mean its uh, uh, its periodic extension, whether you take that to be uh, so. Uh, so, for instance, if I have some function here, and I, I, I want to, hold on, I'm going to rewrite that. I'm going to do something like this, and it has to go like this, maybe, and then go back up. And that's L, and that's negative L. Con continuity in the periodic extension means that whatever this function is, that when we get to those breakpoints at L and negative L, the periodic extension has to keep going. And there's 3L. So these points have to match up, okay? And that condition uh, then allows us to do a term-by-term -term, uh, differentiation. So that's a pretty severe constraint. So the question then is, what about uh, integration, term by term? So it turns out uh, less, it's less restrictive. So let's recall what integration is. So in general, integration is less restrictive. It's a very robust operation. It can be done a lot, where, di where differentiation uh, oftentimes runs into problems. So let's just pick an example. I'll just pick something really simple. I'll make an f of x just like this, and it's going to be on uh, uh, negative l to l, put a zero in the middle. I'm just going to give you a simple example. Here's a function that it goes like that and then it goes up like that, and then down like that. So this has a discontinuity. So uh, term by term uh, differentiation won't work. But now let's think about the integral. So let's talk about f, capital F of x, which I'm going to define as the integral from negative L to x 
of f of, and I'll put a dummy integration variable in there. So now let's write that down. So here's capital F. So we see that what we're looking at for every x value, we want to think of the area under the curve. And if, as x moves to the right, we'll see the area gets bigger and bigger, and it should happen in a linear fashion, like that. And we get to here, if x is here now, we see we get all that area under the curve is already achieved, and we get this bigger chunk of area starts showing up. What we get is a steepness in the slope. So right at that point there, the slope goes up. And then when we finally get to here, we go down to a smaller amount of area. So if we're over here, the area starts going down to that regular, that more normal, uh, lower slope there. So we have a linear increase. So here is a constant function with steps in it, and it creates that sort of thing. So we have these points where we have a transition between two levels of slopes. One thing to notice about this is this is continuous. At least not the periodic extension, but certainly, um, but certainly, uh, um, but certainly over the interval from negative l to l, it, it's continuous. And so uh, uh, what we have here is we take something that has discontinuities, but when we take the integral of it, we get something continuous. So in general, you know, integration uh, smooths things out. So, uh, from that lesson, and again, I'm not trying to be rigorous here and, 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 der and derive, you know, and prove a theorem, but I'll state a theorem about term-by-term -term integration that, that, that follows pretty much from the same idea, the idea that uh, the integration smooths things out. So the theorem is, if, uh, if f tilde is piecewise smooth, and that guarantees we can write down a, a, a Fourier series, then f, f, the integral, has, so capital F of x, has a Fourier series equal to the, the term by term Hold on. I'm going to rewrite that. The term by term integrated Fourier series of f tilde. And so what we mean by this is if I take f of x, it's equal to the integral from negative l to x of f of s ds is equal to the integral from negative L to x of a0 plus the sum of the cosine, uh, oops, sorry, I messed something up there. We have to put our coefficients in there of the cosine, and I'll just abbreviate what I'm writing here because it, can, it gets really repetitive, dot, 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 ds. And that equals a a zero x plus the sum the integral you have the a n and we have those integrals. Oops, I'm going to rewrite this on a second line. So I'm just going to rewrite it down here. a zero x plus the sum n equals uh, 1 to infinity of a n integral from negative l to x cosine dot 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 plus or ds plus b n integral from negative l to x of sine dot 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 ds. Okay, so we can actually move the integral sign through that infinite sum like so.
Uh, so let's let's illustrate an example of what we mean by this. So again, what we're saying here is that integration term by term is legal in all cases where the Fourier series can be expanded for a piecewise smooth uh, uh, a, a periodic extension. Okay, so let's give an example and conclude. All right, so our example will be a pretty straightforward one. We're going to look at something we've looked at before. f of x is equal to 1 on 0 to L. And so we're going to expand the sine series. So we take uh, the odd extension. The odd, I should say, odd periodic extension f of x tilde. I'm going to write down what that looks like. So again, for 0 to L, it's just going to be the function 1. I can put a little open circle. Maybe I'll put a closed circle there, an open circle down there. And I make it negative 1. So it's 1 here. And I'm going to make it negative 1 for that. For the, for the interval from uh, neg 0 to negative L. All right, and of course, this is going to keep alternating like that. The periodic extension is going to keep going for 2L, 3L, and so on and so forth. All right, so um, let's write down what the periodic extension looks like. It's going to be the sum. It's going to be a sine series of Bn sine n pi over Lx. n equals 1 to infinity. All right, and so the Bn's can be calculated from the formula. This is the orthogonal projection, which we can write as 2 over L, 0, integral from 0 to L of, we put the function 1 in there, sine n pi over L x dx. All right, and it has a solution that is fairly straightforward to write down. It's going to be 2 over n pi of uh, 1 minus cosine n pi, um, like so. We can write down that integral. Uh, and, um, and this is equal to uh, 4 over n pi for n odd and 0 for n even. OK, so, um, so that's simple enough. Now we want to calculate what We'll do a term by term integration. Capital F of X is now going to, we're going to take that integration inside. And because this is a piecewise smooth function, uh, and we can expand it as a Fourier series, we can simply uh, do the integral from negative L to X of Bn, n equals 1 to infinity, uh, sine n pi over L X. So oh, sorry, I need to put this would be n pi over L S now D S because uh, X now is we're, we're considering this a dummy variable of integration. So we can move the integral integral symbol through the sum and that is guaranteed by our theorem. And that becomes a B N and and we have to integrate this, negative L to X of sine n pi over L S times S dS. And that's a pretty straightforward integral to compute. It's going to be uh, Bn, n equals 1 to infinity. And sine, the antiderivative of sine is cos negative cosine n pi over L. And we're going to multiply that by... Um, n pi over L. We're going to divide by n pi over L. We're going to evaluate that at negative L to x. There's an s in there. All right. All right, so um, we can also write this down as follows. We can write this down as n equals 1. n is odd all the way to infinity, right? Uh, oh, sorry. I think I... I uh, no, we're good. We're good. So... Um, so that becomes then, uh, we have that 4 n pi, right? And that's just this bn term here, right? And now what we do is we multiply uh, an l there, because this term is going to 
is going to come up. We're going to flip the denominators. And that becomes a quantity squared because now there's another one of those terms sitting there. And this becomes, uh, it becomes um, uh, cosine. We evaluate at negative L. We put that in the front and that becomes n pi and it's subtracted by um, cosine of n pi over L x. All right, so this is a little tricky here. We're going to keep going, charging ahead. And we see here that these are uh, a, a bunch of, um, this is, a, this is a, a, a tricky issue. So these are all odd, these are all odd, right? So what's an odd value of that? What is that going to be? Um, that's going to be, um, well, that's going to be, whoops, okay, sorry guys. Uh, because we're, th I made a mistake here, because we were considering, um, we we're considering only over the, the odd extension, we want it, we we're only considering the function f of x equals 1 over 0 to l, we actually only want to integrate from 0. I made a little mistake there. Okay, so that's going to make this term 0 here, and what we're going to get out of it is the sum from n equals 1, and we're going to go only the odds, and we're going all the way to infinity, and we have uh, now uh, uh, 4L over n pi, so cosine of 0 of course is just 1, n pi, and we're going to go quantity squared there, and then we're going to go minus uh, 4 pi, or sorry, 4L over n pi, quantity squared, cosine n pi over L x. Okay, so what we see here is we have two terms, uh, if you will. There, there's this, this term here, which is really just an infinite series. We'll put that in the parentheses, and that's just going to be... And I'll take out all the extraneous bits. That's going to be 4L over pi squared sum n equals 1, all the odds, to infinity of 1 over n squared. All right, and so that's a series. And it's a p-series. And it converges. Okay. The second thing we see here is we have a, a minus sign there and a 4L over pi squared sum n equals 1 odds to infinity of 1 over n squared cosine uh, n pi over L x. All right, so this is a Fourier series. It's a cosine series. So the cosine series, and, and we see here this is a constant, which we're going to call um, a0. So it converges, but it converges to an unknown value. And we see this cosine series here. So the next question then is, okay, remember that f of x, the original function, was just 1. So we know that capital F of x is just going to be the integral from 0 to x of 1 ds, which is going to be x. Okay, so we... we we presume then that this Fourier series is actually the Fourier, the cosine Fourier series for x, based on our theorem. And so uh, we want to know what that series is, what that converges to. So let's get a new sheet of paper. So we're going to contend then that x, the Fourier series, the cosine Fourier series, is going to be equal to um, 4L over pi squared sum of n equals 1 odd to infinity of 1 over n squared, that's going to be equal to our a naught plus the sum of 4L over pi squared, 1 over n squared, 
an odd to infinity of cosine n over n n pi over l x. Okay, so uh, what is the value of this this thing here? Well, we can actually get it by just uh, expand. Let's actually go the other way now and look at what is the um, cosine series of x. Well, we've computed that before. Recall it's the function. It, it looks like the, 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 period, the even periodic extension is going to be the function absolute value of x from 0 to l. And then there's the negative l. And we can calculate a 0 is going to be just, um, uh, it's just going to be um, uh, 1 over l integral from 0 to l of x dx, which is going to be l over 2. All right, so that gives us this really nice result. Now we have a way of calculating these infinite series that we never would able to know what the value was before. So it's going to be L times 4 over pi, the sum of, uh, of n odd all the way to infinity, 1 over n squared. Uh, so this value here, if we take off the L, part, the L factor, that's just going to be just one half. So that's an interesting result that we can actually find the values for Fourier series by, um, or values of infinite series by, by knowing something about the Fourier series. So there we go. And we've computed this function before. We've computed its cosine Fourier series, and now it shows up again here um, as, our, as our result uh, of integration term by term. So thank you very much. Thank you.